call the hearing to order. I want to thank all of you for coming to today's hearing to receive testimony from our colleagues. I look, for I look forward to hearing more about the projects and programs in the Agriculture Appropriations Bill that are important to each of your districts and to communities across the country. Your input will be critical as we work to fund the agency under this subcommittee's jurisdiction. I look forward to working with Ranking Member Bishop to accommodate these priorities as best we can as the FY24 appropriations process moves forward. Thank you again to each of our colleagues who have taken time out of your busy schedule to speak with us today and to bring issues important to your community to our attention. Ranking Member Bishop, I yield to you for any opening remarks you would like to make. Thank you, Chairman Harris. I'm looking forward to hearing testimony from our colleagues on both sides of the aisle and from Ohio to Hawaii on the agencies under our subcommittee's jurisdiction. As I've often noted, these agencies conduct vital work that touch the lives of every American. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you on your thoughts on the appropriations process, the programs and issues that affect your district and your constituents. Uh, your input is invaluable to us uh, as we draft the FY24 bill. I want to thank every member who has taken time out of that day to speak to us today, and we appreciate your interest in the work of our subcommittee. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. And first, I'd like to recognize Dr. Schreier for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Harris and Ranking Member Bishop, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to share my priorities and concerns as a representative of Washington's 8th Congressional District. Uh, I write to um, speak with you today to respectfully request consideration of the following priorities in fiscal year 2024, Ag, Rural Development, Food and Drug Administration, and Related Agencies Appropriations Bill. Uh, the first topic is about agriculture research facilities, and I would ask for generous funding here. Uh, along with my colleague from Kansas, uh, Rep Rep Representative Tracy Mann, and a strong group of bipartisan members, I'll be sending a letter to the committee uh, urging $500 million in investments for agricultural research infrastructure as authorized through the Research Facilities Act in Section 7503 of the 2018 Farm Bill. I sincerely appreciated the committee's efforts to include $2 million in initial funding within the 23 omnibus bill and request further consideration to help address our deferred research maintenance backlog. Now, this funding will support competitive grants to land-grant universities and non-land-grant colleges of agriculture for facility construction, alteration, acquisition, modernization, and without these investments, uh, many from the 1950s and the 1960s, the U.S. really risks losing its competitiveness and ability to properly recruit and train the next generation of world-class researchers. Uh, this investment will reposition the U.S. as a leader globally. Second, I want to make a note of the importance of the community project funding to my district uh, and districts across the country. Uh, the fiscal year 23 bill included $3 million for the development of a new food distribution center for the Chelan Douglas Community Action Council, which provides support for individuals experiencing food insecurity in rural areas. And I ask that you consider uh, community project funding submissions for the 24 bill that bolster our nation's food system and the economic success of rural America, especially at a time when food prices are so high. Uh, next, I want to touch on the importance of funding federal nutrition assistance program. Recent data show that 34 million people, including 9 million children in our country, are reporting food insecurity. Rates are the highest in homes with children in rural areas and among communities of color. And these programs are more important than ever now with prices so high at the grocery store. As a pediatrician, I cannot overstate the importance of ensuring our children not only have access to food, but have nutritious food because poor nutrition is linked to chronic diseases such as diabetes and heart disease in young and old people. I ask the committee to provide the necessary funding to ensure kids have access to nutritious food, including support for WIC, SNAP, TFAP, GooseNIP, and more. Uh, this year, I want to sp call special attention to the Supplemental uh, Special Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, or WIC. And I urge the committee uh, to honor the longstanding bipartisan commitment to fund this program at a level that can serve projected increased caseload. Falling short of this could result in local agencies imposing waiting lists 
uh, for the first time in 25 years and result in young children and families not getting proper nutrition. Uh, in addition, sustaining the increased uh, in issuance for fruit and vegetables is particularly critical for boosting the consumption of healthy foods and curbing childhood and later adult obesity. And next, I want to specially mention the Specialty Crop Research Initiative and Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. Uh, these fund research that supports hundreds of specialty crop farmers in Washington state. Past funding projects have supported efforts to combat fungicide resistance in wine grapes, precision irrigation for fruit growers, and pest prevention in onions. These are especially critical to the farmers in my district at a time with changing climate and changing threats. In the past several years, I've worked hard to make sure specialty crop researchers have access to the resources they need, and was pleased that my fix to allow waiver authority for SCRI was included in the last four appropriations bills. Until a permanent fix is enacted, uh, the 2020 language restoring the waiver authority has to be included in annual appropriation bills, please. Uh, lastly, I want to call attention to little cherry disease. Uh, this poses tremendous threat to cherry growers in my district. It's a disease that spreads by uh, in insects and by roots, and the only cure is to uproot those trees, and we are seeing tremendous crop loss. So thank you uh, for your leadership during this process, and thank you for your consideration of the needs in my district. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Schreier. Just, uh, uh, as we've talked about before, you know, in your paragraph you say, you know, kids have to have access to nutritious food, including WIC and SNAP, but as we know, WIC is nutritious food because we actually have a, what we'd call a formulary for it, but we don't have that for SNAP, and uh, hopefully we can work on making the SNAP products that are available more nutritious as well as we, as we seek to fight things like childhood obesity. I stand ready to work with you on that. Thank you. Oh, we're going to take you up on that. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, testify today. Thank you very much. Representative Takuda, you're recognized for five minutes. Good morning, Chairman Harris, Ranking Member Bishop. Um, mahalo for this opportunity to testify today on behalf of Hawaii's second congressional district. Uh, as a member of the Agriculture Committee, I recognize the important role agricultural producers play in our economy and our lives. We rely on farmers and ranchers across our nation every day for the food we eat, the clothes we wear, and the fuel we need to keep this country running. However, farming is a hard way to make a living. From long hours to erratic weather to workforce shortages, we ask farmers to do so much while too many are just scraping by to get to the next planting season. Farmers in Hawaii face the same challenges by those on the continent, but we also have to manage them on islands with very limited land and access to inputs in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, 2,500 miles away from the West Coast, with new invasive pests and disease feasting on our year-round growing season, threatening more and more crops each year. You play a critical role in ensuring that our country's farmers, ranchers, and producers and researchers have the support they need to keep going. Thank you for your significant contributions and investments in agriculture in fiscal year 2023. Today, as we focus on fiscal 24 during a much anticipated farm bill year, I would like to highlight a few programs that have been critical in Hawaii and humbly ask for your continued support. First, thank you for consistently providing funding for the micro grants for food security program since it was authorized in the 2018 Farm Bill. The program provides micro grants to small producers and community organizations in Hawaii, Alaska, and the territories to increase the quantity and quality of locally grown food in food insecure communities like ours. As a result of the pandemic and high cost of food in these areas, demand for the program has greatly outpaced current funding. Last year, with significant levels of food insecurity existing on all of our islands, only 8% of microgrant applications were able to receive funding. I request that you fully fund the microgrants for food security program in fiscal year 24 at its authorized level of $10 million to ensure the program can fully help those that are looking to provide food for themselves and their communities. Next, minority serving institutions play a vital role in increasing access to education in agriculture and related sciences to make our nation's agricultural sector more competitive. The University of Hawaii is a native Hawaiian serving institution and land grant university. 
In addition to essential capacity funding, the Alaska Native Serving and Native Hawaiian Serving Institutions Education Competitive Grants Program has been critical to carrying out education, applied research, and community development programs that would otherwise struggle to receive funding. For example, UH has been a world leader in tropical flower variety development, which is critical to Hawaii's floriculture industry. Fully funding the ANNH program at its authorized level of $10 million is desperately needed to meet the increased challenges we face today, such as expanding research to support Hawaii's indigenous and traditional staple crops like kalo or taro and ulu or breadfruit to be more resilient to climate conditions, pests, and disease. Furthermore, direct specialty crop research funding has been essential for iconic Hawaii agriculture industries like coffee and macadamias, which we all enjoy. Thank you for your support for the Coffee Plant Health Initiative and Macadamia Nut Tree Health Initiative, which have played a key role in combating invasive disease like coffee leaf rust and pests like tropical nut borer. I ask for your continued support for these initiatives and ask for your help to add funding for threats to our avocado industry and dealing with the impacts of the spittle bug, which have both been recognized through report language in the last two Congresses. Lastly, as I've highlighted multiple times today, invasive species threaten agriculture producers in Hawaii and across our country. Investments in prevention are a matter of national security and are significantly cheaper than mitigation efforts, like expensive ungulate perimeter fences and losses once species and diseases are, diseases are introduced. Funding for programs like the Agriculture Quarantine Inspection Program and the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service is critical to our food security and agricultural industry. Chairman Harris, Ranking Member Bishop, our farmers and ranchers work in service to our country every day, making it possible for us to have food on our tables. We need to help them put food on theirs. The threats and opportunities to agriculture and our ability to feed and fuel our country are real, and I look forward to working with you and the subcommittee on issues facing our agricultural producers. Mahalo. Thank you very much, uh, Representative. Let me just ask you a question because invasive species are a problem everywhere. In my district, we have lantern fly, the spotted lanternfly, we have blue catfish. I mean, you mentioned uh, the coffee leaf rust and the tropical nut borer. Are we being successful in controlling those invasive species or where do we stand with those? Right now we're losing the fight, quite frankly, and we need to do more uh, to be able to research how we're gonna help our farmers keep more of their crop. I literally have stared at coffee fields that once I could not see through them because the leaves were so lush, I can see to the back of their properties. Um, they're anticipating that sometimes less than a third uh, can actually go to market at this point. So our farmers are barely hanging on at this point. And, much research is needed, support for those crop losses are required, and quite frankly, looking forward to what threats could come next uh, is something we've also got to do. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for taking thank the you. time today. Thank you very much. Um, what you highlight is typical across agriculture in America, and uh, we fully support it. Mahalo. And we invite you to come to Hawaii anytime to um, join us in the fight for agriculture. Mahalo. Mr. Bishop, we might have to do a field trip out there. And, uh, it maybe it, maybe have a hearing on those invasive diseases. <laughs> Sounds really good to me. Uh, Mr. Flood, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Harris, Ranking Member Bishop, and all the members of the subcommittee. I'm grateful for this opportunity to come before you today and highlight an important project to promote cutting edge egg research in the United States, the Midwest, and in my home state of Nebraska. You may already be aware of this program. It was championed by my predecessor, Mr. Fortenberry. Specifically, I'd like to call your attention to the US Department of Agriculture Ag Research Service National Center for Resilient and Regenerative Precision Agriculture. Agriculture plays a tremendous role in the Midwest region of the United States. The seven state region of Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Minnesota, Missouri, North Dakota, and South Dakota accounts for more than 30% of the nation's $487 billion in ag production output and is home to 411,000 farms and ranches. Although the Midwest region accounts for just 14% of the nation's land mass, 80% of the land in these states is in ag production. In total, the region accounts for more than 40% of U.S. cropland, nearly 20% of U.S. pasture land, and nearly 30% of total U.S. agriculture sector protection production. 
However, our nation is at a critical juncture in advancing precision agriculture. In the next two decades, experts predict that U.S. agriculture will transition from mechanized agriculture using large diesel-powered tractors and the like to digital agriculture using highly networked small robotic implements utilizing high input data. On-farm decision-making will be guided by these digital tools for targeted precision enterprise level management. These technological changes coupled with rapid growing world production demanding increased food production means that our producers must adopt 21st century regenerative, regenerative management practices that promote resilience of our soil, water, and natural resources. As the nation's ag systems move from mechanized to digital agriculture, the federal government must invest in precision agriculture research to, to guide and drive this change. The National Center for Resilient and Regenerative Precision Agriculture is a planned $110 million facility co-located co USDA ARS lab facility of 120,000 square feet with a 15,000 square foot greenhouse adjacent to a $50 million state and philanthropically funded University of Nebraska Ag Tech Accelerator building. This facility will be the first of its kind to utilize a hub and spoke model focused on regenerative and precision agriculture, which will bring together scientists from highly productive and nationally renowned land grant universities with ARS scientists across the nation to ensure the United States remains the leader in feeding and fueling a growing world. The existing ARS units in Lincoln will join two new research units in this facility, housing over 150 people when completed. Congress has already appropriated planning and design funds as well as funds for the greenhouse construction with groundbreaking expected in 2024. The full USDA ARS lab building will be constructed when Congress has appropriated the total funds for the project. I'm here today to ask the committee to continue its support for this important and much needed facility. Conveniently, the Midwest region is home to 18 public research universities eight of which are land-grant institutions and drivers of game-changing research in a variety of disciplines. Constructing this center in close proximity to existing ARS facilities and strong land-grant universities will amplify capabilities and collaborations and benefit the entire nation. This project has received continued support from the administration and USDA officials. It is specifically included in the USDA's budget book for FY24. Dr. Shavanda Jacobs Young, Undersecretary for Research, Education, and Economics, and Chief Scientist at the USDA, has repeatedly expressed the department's support for this facility. Most, she said, uh, most, she stated, quote, I will continue to promote and advance for the cost-effective and timely development of this new facility to ensure that it will be open for business as soon as possible, end quote. This project has also garnered support from state leaders in Nebraska. In 2022, the state legislature passed and the governor signed into law $25 million to be matched by private philanthropic funding to construct the University of Nebraska companion facility for the National Center. Most importantly, this project has strong community support. Several commodity stakeholder groups and community organizations in my home state have sent letters in support of the National Center and demonstrated their support through continued advocacy. All in all, the National Center boasts diverse and robust support from across the region, the Midwest region, the state of Nebraska, and the local community. I thank you very much for the opportunity to present, and I yield back. Thank you very much. Let me just ask one question. The uh, state support is for exactly what? The $25 million to be matched by private philanthropic funding. What's that going to construct on your map there, on your diagram? The $25 million uh, funds a companion facility for the National Center. So the National Center includes the greenhouse in this area. Uh, the companion facility I believe is down here, and it includes um, ag research opportunities from the University of Nebraska, researchers from the University of Nebraska. We're working to put some of our existing ag research from other campuses and pull it into Lincoln. I see, so, so, so they'll, they'll both be incorporated in that right. orange space there. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Mr. Bishop, do you have any questions? Yes. Um, no question, just a comment. Uh, we're very much familiar with this facility. Uh, as a matter of fact, the subcommittee uh, offered funding in the House bill uh, last year in appropriations. 
apparently it didn't survive conference, but uh, the subcommittee was very, very supportive, and uh, your predecessor was a very a strong advocate for it, and uh, it seems to be a very good program, uh, very timely, and uh, I, I would hope that we can give consideration to it again this year. Thank you. Mr. Fortenberry was certainly a champion, and I know that our U.S. Senate delegation working very hard. Now we have a member on appropriations in the U.S. Senate, so hope for a better outcome. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Flood. Uh, with no other members uh, here to testify this morning, uh, the hearing is adjourned.